What's poppin' gems? It's your girl Regal, and you guys are tuned into another episode of the hottest podcast and YouTube channel for self love, women, and culture. Regal me, baby. A go ahead, baby. A regal me, baby. Go ahead, baby. Yes, thank you guys so much for being here. So welcome or welcome back. Um, if you have not already joined the gang, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit the notification bell so that you will be notified every time I upload. So I think I'm about to embark on a challenge, but I'm not going to tell you guys just yet because I want to make sure I'm 100% committed before I tell you guys. But if you guys read the title of the story, or the, excuse me, if you guys read the title, y'all already know what it is. You saw the thumbnail, you know what it is. So with that being said, <clears throat> Black Girl Bliss, we need you to come to the front of the congregation, sis. We got to chop it up, okay? So snapped. She snapped. I'm going to be reviewing her book, Pussy Prayers. This is going to be Sacred and Sensual Rituals for Women of Color. So if you guys have not read this book, go ahead and read it. I'm going to just read like the first little paragraph. Pussy Prayers is the rekindling your connection. Excuse me. Pussy Prayers is about rekindling your connection to your pleasure center. The space through which you manifest and create worlds, regardless of the body parts you do or don't have. Now, y'all, this is the book I didn't even know that I needed, okay? Now, like most amazing things that come to my life are wisdom and jewels, I got this book from my soulmate. Shout out to Moonflowers. Um, Moonflowers. Moonflower. Y'all have heard me talk about her. Y'all will continue to hear me talk about her. It's my soulmate. I love her. And she's always pouring into your girl. So... She got this book for me, um, kind of like as a birthday present for my mom, for me, last year during the pandemic. And this was a time where I was really just coming into healing and really realizing like, damn, I got a lot of triggers and there's a lot of things going on with me that I need to work through. So her sweet self, she actually purchased this book for me along with... Um, uh, Freaking a Queen of Fua book, The Sacred Woman, a self-love workbook, a hoodoo tarot book. Like, so just hooked it up and really just was like, here, read, pour into yourself, figure out some things. And I'm like, all right, bet. Thank you. So now when I first got the book, um, was she out here? No, um, my girlfriend had moved back to Kansas and I was telling her about the book and she was like, oh, that sounds good. I want to read it. We should read it together. So I'm like, all right, bet, cool. We could do that. And so we were reading the book together, but I'm a reader, you know, and I was really getting back into reading. I'm a bookworm. She doesn't really like to read. So I just found that a lot of time had gone on and we weren't reading. So the first, what I like about it though, the first chapter, it has you do work, y'all. So it's in the beginning of the book, kind of like after you go through chapter one, she has these questions, I guess you could say, called pressure points. And so I just want to read a few of them to you. There's four of them, but it says, who taught you about what it meant to be a woman? Where did you learn it? And how did it make you feel about womanhood? That's a deep question. Um, what is feminine in your own words? Do you feel feminine? Why or why not? So as you can see, these are the type of pressure points that really get you thinking about what does it be, mean to be a woman for me? Like, who taught me that? How do I show up as a woman? Am I feminine? What do I feel about it? Um, is there a presence of div divine femininity in your life, whether through your own personal spiritual practice or an organized religion? How does this feminine present or lack thereof influence your ideas of femininity, femininity and womanhood? So as you guys can see, these are something that these are pressure points that you actually journal. So what I love about that is this is a great book that if you're kind of realizing like, dang, I think there's some work that I need to do. But where do I journal about? Where do I start? This is going to be a great starting book and a resource for a lot of us out there. So. <sighs> and what I love about it, she starts off the book in the first three words is pussy, pussy, pussy. <laughs> and I'm not going to say pussy that much in this video just because I don't want to get demonetized. So I will be saying yoni. So you guys will hear me use those words interchangeably. Um, but yeah, she was saying basically reclaiming that, reclaiming that and not making it feel like it's such a taboo word and that, you know, we shouldn't be saying 
and things like that. So it was a really, really first chapter I opened when I read it. It was like, okay. Um, now, like I said, during this time, y'all, and I got my notes over here because y'all know I can go on and on and on be rambling. So now during this time, I was really dealing with a lot of triggers and traumatic experiences that were really tied to this ex. And this one ex in particular, I speak about him on my podcast in the episodes of Virginities. So if you guys want more information about kind of the things that I went through in that situation and kind of area of my life, you guys can go ahead and check that out at Stay Regal Radio, wherever podcasts are heard. Um, so a lot of the things and situations and trigger and traumas that I had gone through with him was really coming up heavy at that time in my life. Now, I got the book, say, August of 2020. This is cut to, say, I want to say like January. So yeah, January 2021. And, you know, life is going on as it should. You know, I'm in and I'm in and out of therapy because my therapist switched up on me, but it's cool. I'm not no hard feelings. Love you, girl. And I'm just trying to find my bearings. You know, I'm trying to stay balanced in the world that is super unbalanced. There's so many uncertain things going on. And I'm just, you know, going through life trying to be the best version of me that I can be, really. And so cut to January 28th. Or 29th, excuse me. I get a call from a long lost friend of mine, family member. Um, and that's instantly how I knew something was up because we hadn't spoken in a long time. And, you know, she's being stubborn. I was being stubborn. And she called me and she was like, hey, you know, it's me. And I just felt like you should know. And I instantly knew exactly what had happened. And I was just like, no, like, nah, shut up. Be, don't, don't say that. And she started crying. And she was letting me know that her, her little brother had passed away, who was the ex that I was speaking of. And may he rest in peace. And this is just my story, y'all. This is just my truth. I really hope that everybody can take it as such um and yeah i'm gonna leave it at that so hearing those words was like having your gut just like ripped from out of your stomach i felt like a bottomless pit <sighs> the things that i had experienced in that relationship just not understanding how someone I could love so much could treat me so horribly. Um, how I could allow someone to treat me so horribly. Um, but that is the relationship where I really, really, really lost myself, you guys. I lost the will to live. Um, I kind of let all my light at that time just go out. I, I had no desire to continue living. Um, I just wanted life to be over at that point in my life because of the things that I experienced, the the abuse, mental, emotional, physical, sexual, um, financial. And no, I'm not sitting here playing the victim because people only do what you allow them to. But all of that kind of was like rushing through me. And then just to find out um, that he was gone and how he passed away, you know, homeless, on drugs, mentally just gone um, at a bus stop. Mm, it really, really broke my heart. Um, because I'm the type of person, once I loved you, I'm going to always love you. You know, if the, real, the love is real, even through all the bullshit that he had put me, put me through, I loved him. I loved him with everything that I had at that time and continued to love him, still prayed for him, uh, wished him well, you know, didn't want him to be living the life that he was living because he had options. So I was always praying for things to be better. So just to realize like, damn, like he went out and he was all alone. It really saddened me and devastated me. And then the mind fuck comes in because 
I kind of get angry. Like, damn, all the years that have passed and I'm still holding on to all the different things that have happened to me that I can't let go of that high key <laughs> really prevent me from real closeness in my relationships now. <sighs> and I kind of just felt like, damn, I'm stuck with all of it. And, you know, he went on and lived his life and now he's gone and I still don't have any closure and I'm still just holding on to this for what? What are you holding on to all this for? Like, let it go. And that's on me. That has nothing to do with him. I know releasing and becoming better has nothing to do with him. But that happened. So that was around January 29th. Now, you know, of course, you know, I'll go be with his family. Um, and I'm just trying to process it all. Uh, being around all of his family like that. I had seen his mom, you know, a few times. Um seeing his older brother, his grandmother, it was just like, damn, like this is real. And I couldn't believe it. So now I'm telling y'all this story and I'm trying to do it chronologically so that you guys can see how it's all going to tie together. So just rock with your girl for a minute. Now, in the interim of all of this, um, I started a new segment, A Moment in Her Story, um, and I wanted to really highlight Black beautiful women and their stories because I felt like they were making Black history currently. And I kicked off that segment with Queen Christina Joy. So if you guys have not already seen that episode, go ahead and check it down below. And I like to ask people about books. I'm a bookworm. So I asked her about, you know, what are her favorite books right now? A smut book and a spiritual book. And it was funny because she was talking about The Coldest Winter Ever, which happens to be one of my favorite books. And this is around the time Sister Soldier was about to be coming out with the, the uh, sequel. So we were just like kikiing about that book. And when she got to the spiritual book, she said Pussy Prayers by Black Girl Bliss. And I kind of just was like, what? Like, nah, yeah, like that's literally on my bookshelf right now. Super, super excited. And so I was like, okay, that's confirmation. Like it's time for me to pick that book up. Stop playing. Let me read that. So by the time Jordan had passed on, I had been reading the book. You know, I was taking my time with it because literally it is a lot, ladies, to unpack. And it gives you such a... Um, let me get, let me, let me get aside myself. But it gives you a lot to think about. Like, damn, so many ways that we've been conditioned and programmed to think about our pleasure and our pussies and our power. So... It was very much um, a lot going on at that time. So, I really started digging in on the book, y'all. It was so good. And it was just giving me different perspectives on the way that I see my pleasure with my relationship and my connection to my Yoni and how sacred it is. And honestly, how much I had really neglected her. Um, of course, a safer one, I just needed to get something off and get an issue off my chest, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? And I was just like feeling very heavy, like, wow, this has so much truth to it. And just knowing all the issues and problems I've had with my vagina and my yoni throughout my life. And we're going to get into more of that a little bit later. But it was time for me to go and have a, a gyno appointment. Now, a few years back, you know, I was uh, diagnosed with PCOS. PCOS, yes. And so... My periods are irregular, you know, y'all probably see my little beard and stuff, but I'm still cute with it <laughs> and all that kind of stuff or whatever, right? So I deal with that. So I don't have regular periods, but it had been a minute since I'd actually had one and I'd been using uh, by Issa G, excuse me, Issa G Beauty, the Sweet Puss Tea Oil. And at one point in time, that really, it made my period come. And so I told my doctor, look, I'm not taking no pills, girl. I'm going to use this because she had me on birth control at one point in time. And I know in one month I had three periods and I was just like, done. I'm not doing this anymore. So I was like, look, I'm just going to stick to this herbs and this oil. And if it doesn't work, then cool, whatever. So, you know, it had been a minute and I had been using the oil and it didn't make my period come again. So my doctor was like, look, we need to get you in and we really need to, you know, drain you because... You have all this stuff backed up and that's not good and eventually that can lead to cancer and with the history of your family we don't want that so i'm just like <sighs> so 
as you guys can probably imagine, it's very daunting. I'm going in and I'm just like real heavy on the way to the doctor's appointment. Now, at this time, um, my girlfriend was in town and I tried to go to the appointment alone. And she was just like, no, you know, I want to go with you. And I was just like, cool. I just knew that where I was mentally and emotionally and I already know the different things that I've gone through with the history of my yoni. And I was just like, I knew I wasn't going to be really wanting to be around anybody. But Neil, she's stubborn, so she's in a car with me. Now, on the way to this appointment, y'all, I started thinking about um, my ex. I'm seeing homeless people. And at this point, he has already passed on. He has already transitioned. I decided not to go to his memorial service because I was at a place where I'm like, in life, I gave you all I had. And you took 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 till I had nothing left. And then I still tried to give you more. And I was just like, nah, I can't keep showing up for him. I have to show up for myself. So I decided not to go um, to his memorial service. So on the way to this doctor's appointment, I'm seeing homeless people and I'm just thinking about him and I'm getting sad and I'm crying. And then I have this doctor's appointment, right? So uh, we do the annual check and she asked, I was reading my book. She asked me and I love my gynecologist. Like I'm not shouting her out because anytime I need an appointment, I have to wait months. Like she's that good. And she's a black woman. She is amazing. She takes the time to really talk to her patients, explain, get to know us. You know, when you go to a doctor's and you're like, you sit down and they're like, so why are you here today? None of that bullshit. She knows why you're here. She remembers the last conversation. She remembers the plan that she set up in place for you. Like she knows her patients. And that is why it's so hard to damn get her in that. It's hard to get in the office, y'all. So I'm not shouting her out. But I do shout her out when people ask personally. But I ain't doing that. on the, I'm not on YouTube. No, I need to get into my gyno when I need her. But anyway, fast forward. So we do my woman's exam and my, um, you know, uh, what is it called? My womenly, you know, annual woman's exam and things like that. And we're talking and she's like, so tell me about the medicine that I need to take and uh, the lifestyle changes I need to make and how long we've been going through this and am I ready to listen now? And she's just talking about, hey, this is not safe for you. You know, you can end up, you're at high risk for um, a uterine cancer. And I'm just like... <sighs> just like, okay, like I can't, you know, already been told like I may not be able to have kids um, because of the PCOS and that's gut wrenching. I, I say that I don't want kids just so that I don't have to really deal with the pain. But of course, I want to see a baby with these cheeks. Like who wouldn't, you know? So it was just all these things swelling through my mind. And then I'm thinking about everything that has happened to my vagina and this book opened my eyes because, you know, I'm thinking I'm healing from emotional trauma and mental trauma from my past. But this was telling us about how, you know, your yoni can go through so much. And she really just needs you to realize that she's hurting, you know, and that you need to deal with that pain. And when you have issues going on with your vagina, it's because she's trying to tell you things and excuse me, she's trying to get you to see that, hey, I need you to pay attention to me. I need you to release some things because I'm not doing so good. So imagine y'all getting all this new information and these downloads from Spirit about how powerful the Yoni is and how if there's things going on, she's just trying to tell you something. Mm. Well, baby, my Yoni been screaming at me for years, y'all. So just to give y'all a little backstory and why this gun appointment was just like, really, it was just like, it broke my back and it broke my spirits because I have been dealing with issues with my Yoni since 17. So back, let's just backtrack to me being 17. No period yet. My mom was just concerned. She's like, hey, you know, I started like when I was 15. And I'm like, mom, she's just going to come when she's going to come. Like, I just don't know what to tell you, you know? And so she took me to the gynecologist. And at the time, my gyno was like, well, you know, she's still a virgin. Like, we're not going inside of her. We're not doing any of that. Like, 
we have to wait until she actually is sexually active before we go inside her. Like, I don't want to do that to her. And I'm like, thank you. See, I told you, mom. And she was like, if, you know, it doesn't come in another year or two, we can revisit this conversation. But until she has sex, like, we don't want to go inside of her. And I'm like, thank you, Jesus. Because I was scared. Scared, y'all. Before I had sex, I was just terrified. Like, I just kept hearing about how bad pap smears hurt. And I was just like, no. So, um, so there was that. Now, cut to when I did finally lose my virginity. It took some time. Um, and actually, in high school, they gave me some medicine that kickstarted, period. I had one, and I was like, nope, it's a wrap. Like, if it's not meant for this shit to happen on its own, she gonna come when she come, because I'm not taking medicine to force myself into that. Hell no. Nah. So I didn't. And then, you know, I really was impressed about it, because I'm like, mom, I'm not having sex. Like, it don't matter if she... What, what what do I need her for? You know, I wasn't tapped in at all. I was so out of touch. Um, and then, you know, just cut to me finally losing my virginity to that ex. And I just lost all sense of self-worth. Um, <laughs> Y'all, I use sex as a way to feel needed, as a way to feel loved, and as a way to keep people around me. I really did not do it because it was a spiritual act or you know, a love thing. It was just a necessity to really keep people around. And that's what I used it for. So the more I did that and the more he it wasn't keeping him faithful, it was definitely, it just kept cutting me down, cutting me down, cutting me down. Cut to him telling me, hey, like, there's something wrong with you. I think you're infertile because you should have been had a baby. Like, there's something, you're, something's wrong with you. Um, <laughs> You know, and then cutting that relationship to the rape, uh, the sexual trauma, just basically being someone's their concubine, for lack of a better term, and not wanting to get demonetized and saying some crazy stuff. But really, I was just there for his pleasure whenever he wanted, whenever he needed. Um, feelings of not being good enough because of the other women brought into the relationship and the things said to me, like it was just a really, really bad time. And you know, as life goes on, it doesn't get any better. My self-esteem is shot um, even after the relationship. You know, I ended up having another in uh, altercation with some sexual assault. Um, and so all this is flowing through my mind. After the main part of our relationship, he and I ended up falling back and getting mixed up in with each other. And it was during that time that I contracted herpes. Um, herpes one, and it just plummeted me. I started spiraling out of control. I was so angry. I felt like a whore. I felt dirty. I felt worthless. Um, and I really hated myself because you know, when I was in the relationship, I would always beg like, God, please don't let me have a baby because then I'm gonna be stuck with him forever. And in that moment, I allowed myself to allow the same person to keep hurting me. And I was going to have something from him for the rest of my life. And at that point, a damn baby would have been better because this shit is what I birds. Like, I was very angry because I really prided myself on being a good girl. Like, although I did use sex as a way to feel loved, I never was a hoe. And no shade to no hoes. Like, y'all lived y'all life and y'all had fun. Kudos to you because look at me. I sat around clank, clank. And then I ended up getting herpes. And I was like, you funny as hell, God. You real funny. And I don't appreciate that. I don't I don't appreciate being the, uh, the damn, what is it called? Punchline. I don't. I don't appreciate this shit. So I'm thinking about all this that went on. And everything is just flooding back to me at the end of this. Well, as I'm driving home from the doctor's appointment, the something's wrong with you, you're infertile. You should have been had this. You should have been started your period. Herpes, this, this, the rapes. Like, I'm just like reliving all of it. And I didn't know that my pussy, I didn't even realize she had gone through so much trauma. And I just whew, break. I'm crying. I'm crying. I'm crying. I'm crying. And, you know, my girl, she's trying to be there for me. And I'm just like, I just need to feel this. I just need to scream. I need to cry. I need to let her feel this. This is how I honor my, my Yoni. She is in pain. And she's trying to let me know, sis, I'm in pain. And I was just in a very reflective state. So, y'all, after this, 
the book talks about different rituals and things that you can do to reconnect. And one of them was placing your hands on your vagina, your yoni, your pussy, whatever you want to call her, and speak to her, talk to her, ask her what she wants. And at first I was like, this is weird. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Like, excuse me, like, and so I just did it. I'm just talking to her and I'm just like, I acknowledge her pain. I'm, I apologize for everything that she's been through and that I didn't realize that she was trying to speak to me all along, all along. And so this was really cool, y'all. So after doing that two days straight, I started getting, you know, cramps and stuff. And I didn't think nothing of it because even though the blood may be absent, I still sometimes have, you know, cramps and things like that. I had started getting the cramps, right? And I'm like, hmm, I didn't think nothing of it because this is normal. Like, I won't bleed, but I'll still get cramps. Figure that, right? And anyway, so I'm just like, okay, it's just, it is what it is. And there's so much going on, you know, y'all. It was a lot going on at that time. And I was overwhelmed and I was just like, cool. And then one day I went to the bathroom and I'm like, oh shit, like my period came. But I instantly knew that this was not by mistake. This was literally from my own power, my own hands on my yoni, talking to her, acknowledging her pain. And she was like, all right, sis, yeah, you're right. I am in pain. Let me release this. And it was really cool, y'all. So trigger one in this may be gross to some people. So y'all might want to exit on out right now, but I'm going to keep shit real. Okay. So I had been hearing about free flowing um, from a couple of goddesses that I know. And I'm not going to say their names because I don't know if they want that to be personal knowledge or public knowledge, but I've been hearing about free flowing. And when I first heard it, I was like, wait, you ain't using no... No pads, no tampons, nothing. Like, how you do that? Like, why would you do that? And instantly, once I started that period, I knew that I'm not about to use any tampons. I'm not about to use pads. Like, I'm going to let this flow as she flows, and I'm going I'm to let go and let God. And as you can imagine, I dirtied up a lot of underwear, but it was cool because shit. You know, I'm penny pack gang, gang, gang. So I had a whole bunch of period pennies that I could use. So I was like, okay, cool. And this was the first time that I felt so at peace with my period, y'all. The cramps didn't bother me. The having to clean up didn't bother me. I felt so freaking powerful. I felt so connected with God. I felt so connected with my body. Um, and in the midst of everything going on, I was centered. Like, I was feeling so much. Now, I'm not going to even act like I understand the connection of your moon cycle with the moon and all that because I, I don't, but I do know that I put these hands on my very, very precious and powerful Yoni and I spoke to her and something that never naturally happens for me happened and ain't nobody gonna make me believe that that wasn't what it was supposed to be and that that wasn't me connecting with my Yoni from knowledge, you know? Had I not read this book, I wouldn't have known to do that. And I prof and to me, my period would not have come. But, you know, it's about getting the knowledge. First about having knowledge and sharing it and then using it, implementing it to get the changes that you want in your life. And that's literally what I did. And I was able to let go of the shame of the traumas that I've been through or that my pussy has been through. You know, the shame of contracting herpes. It wasn't my fault. It happens, shit. Majority of us have it, you know? It sucks that it had to be me, but maybe it takes me standing up and saying, so what? Stop talking about people. It is what it is. Just hope your ass don't get it because you out there thotting and botting. So when you talk about people, you really just talk about your damn self at the end of the day. So... I was able to release so much pain, suffering, trauma, things that I used to tell myself about me because of everything that I had been through and all the pain and suffering that my yoni had gone through. And so I just wanted to say, Black Girl Bliss, thank you. I want to thank you, sis, for sharing your knowledge. Um, I don't know why I feel emotional, but for sharing your knowledge 
and letting this be a, a starting point for so many of us, especially in the Black community. And I want to encourage every uh, Black woman, young girl, if your mother lets you, pick up this book, read it. I know when uh, Queen was having that interview, she was saying, you know, she feels like every Black woman should read it and she was going to let her daughter read it. And, you know, I have a young daughter. She's 13. Um, I will definitely say make sure you know the maturity level of your child before giving them that book. The word, the word pussy is free flowing through that mug. So proceed with caution. Whatever's good for you and your household. But I definitely think... It will do our girls a lot of good to know that they are not just simply around for men or another woman's pleasure, that they can own their pleasure and that there is power in their yoni and that they can call on that. They can get uh, knowledge. They can connect with her and not make them feel like it's something taboo or there's something wrong for them to want to connect with their yoni. Um, and women, get the book. So let's get the book. Get one for your granny, your mama, your auntie, especially older black women, because I really feel like there is such a disconnect. And I'm so proud that our generation is coming and saying, nah, we can heal, y'all. We can be better. We can own this. We can do that and still be respectable women and not have to fit into a mold of what it's like to be woman or to be feminine or to be classy. Because I can twerk and I can write a book and I can teach a seminar, I can hold a workshop, and I can hold consultations to help Black women love themselves better and to tap into their strengths. And so this book, 10 out of 10, would recommend. And I'm so happy that you decided to write this for us. You guys, actually, too, in the back, she does have um, where we could do a sessions, a couple of week sessions about the history, the context and things like that. So I would love to get a group of queens and goddesses together and really go through this book again with a sisterhood um, and some really good dialogue. So if you have already read the book or if you would, excuse me, if you would like to read the book, go ahead and comment below. Let me know if this is something that you would be interested in because I am all for us all diving in together as a collective to really, really hone in the power of our yonis, y'all. So if you're interested in that, make sure you guys drop a comment. If you realize that maybe you have some traumas and some things that your yoni has been through and you want to talk about it, if you're not shy or you want to hit me up personally, you can do that. If you want to drop it in the comment section below, uh, let me know. And if you are someone too, maybe you unfortunately had a run in with herpes and you're scared, you need somebody to talk to, you have questions. You can reach out to me too. Um, all my social media is going to be Regal Me Baby TV on Facebook and IG. Um, you guys can hit me up there. Stay Regal Radio at gmail.com if you want to slide me a little email. If you don't want anything on social media because I totally get it. It's a very... Um, it's a weird situation to talk about. And it took me years to actually get on and do a video. It's held me back for so long. Different things that I wanted to talk about. Uh, conversations. Things but no more because I am not, I'm not going to be defined by it. And you shouldn't either. We powerful as fuck. We beautiful as fuck. We are magical as fuck. And I just wanted you to know that. So with that being said, y'all, go and hit the notification bell. Also, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, y'all. We're going to be talking about some real good shit, funny shit, deep shit up on this channel because I'm just going to be showing the self-love journey and sharing it with y'all. So, with that being said, y'all, we got to stay true. Do you. Fuck self-doubt. Peace and blessings. I love y'all, man. Peace.